Hello everyone, uh, today I'm taking a look at Soul Caster uh, 1 and 2, which were released on Steam. Now if, you don't, if you're not familiar with Soul Caster 1 and 2, you can get them both on the Steam store. Uh, they both come packed together for about $5 when you launch the game and ask you which version you want to play. But uh, Soul Caster is a series developed by Ian Stalker over at Magical Time Beam. Uh, the game was developed a few years back for, originally meant for the Xbox Live Indie platform. Uh, and apparently it was very successful, and uh, then released for PC, and now it's, uh, after a few years, it's finally available on Steam. Uh, with full Steam integration, you know, achievements, uh, I believe this game has trading cards as well, uh, full controller support, just all kinds of things like that. Um, so yeah, I was able to get a really early access copy of this game and actually beta test it and I've been wanting to do a video of it for a while but many things have came up that sort of delayed it so here I am finally taking a look at it. I'm going to be taking a look at Soul Casters uh, 2 uh, just because I feel like it's the more uh, fleshed out version and I haven't quite beat it yet so it's a little bit more uh, interesting for me to play it. Uh, so yeah, you know here you have your keyboard settings where you could change your bindings here. The, the uh, menus are pretty basic, you know, you get to change the display type. Uh, nothing really too fancy here, but there doesn't really need to be. Uh, anyway, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and go to new game here. So yeah, this game's, uh, it's actually a pretty interesting uh, game. I never quite played a game with the oh, mouse is on the screen. I guess there's nothing really I can do about that. Uh, Basically, you see enemies spawn from those points up there, those little spawn points. And what you do is you get these heroes throughout the game, and you just summon them. And they sort of, it's sort of like a, it's almost, I want to say like a tower defense game, but it's a bit more mobile than that. And there is, uh, you know, much like um, those uh, tower defense games, there's a lot of strategy that goes into the placement of your uh, summons and stuff like that. Uh, like for instance here, put them right here. Cause and each uh, hero has their own functions. Like you see the archer can shoot at long range, obviously. Uh, can shoot over the uh, water and stuff like that. Um, You have little items you can pick up. Uh, you get you can get gold, which you can spend at shops. Some levels have shops in them, and you can buy things such as potions and scrolls. Uh, scrolls pretty much wipe all the enemies out. Usually, I think for the tougher enemies, it just damages them, but it pretty much wipes all the uh, weaker enemies out of the uh, the screen. And then the potions, of course. Uh, heal your HP. If you look on the bottom left there, you ha you do have HP, so you don't die in one hit. It does take a little bit of damage. Uh, but if you're not careful, you can get swarmed really easily. So yeah, this is just sort of the beginning of the game, which sort of gives you a uh, tutorial. Like, it just sort of describes, um, you know, how you want to set up the heroes. Like, this scenario right here, it's pretty obvious. You want the tank in front of the bridge so it stops the uh, enemies. And then you put the the archer there so that she can shoot them from range you know it's really important that you uh, really look at the landscape so that you can um, put them here really look at the landscape so you have a uh, good understanding of the environment and where to put everyone uh, you do have a limited amount of summons you see next to the potions on the middle part of the screen at the bottom end I only have two blue balls, and those are basically how much uh, summons I'm allowed to do. I can summon, you know, two of the same, but I can only do two right now. And of course, when I go to the shop, I can buy uh, a soul orb, that's what they're called, which allows me to actually summon an additional uh, ally. You can actually buy upgrades, like for instance, uh, a Luna Arrow, Fowler Ring, and all kinds of different little upgrades that just, you know, increase damage and speed and stuff like that. Uh, so there is some progression in this game. Uh, the game does get pretty challenging near the end, uh, at least for the first one. When I played the first one, it got really challenging near the end of the game. You had to really focus on what you were doing um, in order to beat the stages. Like at one at one point, there's just like four different spawn points, and there's just all kinds of uh, enemies everywhere. Yeah, this is the guy who throws uh, Molotovs can actually throw them over walls if he's set up properly um, and he has splash damage as well so that's nice and when he dies he uh, actually 
Oh, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> yeah, see, you could just, if you do a wrong move like I just did right there and accidentally recalled them, you could, uh, get murdered pretty easily, actually. Like, you do die fairly quickly in this game. So yeah, it's just a really uh, neat little interesting uh, indie game. I've never quite played a game like this, and it's very, uh, it's actually very enjoyable. It's just a fun little puzzle game. That's... Okay, so that's what Bloodfire is really good for, is uh, running behind obstacles. Oh, coming right for me. Let's go ahead. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's recall those. Um, there we go. Oh, this would be a good time to just use the scroll there, and as you can see, it wiped out pretty much all the enemies on the screen. Yes. Oh, wow, he goes right for me. Yeah, you really want to protect your hero, or you're going to get mobbed and killed pretty quickly. I really like the music in this game. I think it uh, sounds really good. It's got a very sort of 90s uh, SNES vibe to it. Let's recall them. Uh, oh, crap, spikes there. So yeah, very early on, you know, the levels are pretty easy. There's nothing too uh, difficult about them. But later in the game, the game gets incredibly challenging, and you really have to think about your placement. Yeah, they do, uh, in certain areas, The uh, your companions will warn you when you go to, when you're about to approach a different area, you know, so that way you can stock up and be prepared. Is this a, is this a shot? Yeah. I find, it weird. I find it interesting that the uh, whenever you go on a merchant, like Hard Rock just starts playing. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, this is the same developer who did uh, Escape Goat, which is a uh, platform game where you play as a goat. It's it's like a pat uh, platform puzzler. It's a pretty uh, interesting game as well. Oh crap! So yeah. So it is, uh, you know, the, the uh, enemies are definitely very unique, uh, especially later in the game, you know, all kinds of different enemy types or different attributes, you know, and you're supposed to use the right heroes on the, against the right uh, enemies to be the most, the most effective. That's actually it's a bad area right here. I wonder if... The, Archer is more effective against the, yeah, Archer is very effective against the uh, skeletons, at least those skeletons. Yeah, and of course they have upgrades that actually allow like the Archer's uh, range to be higher so she can shoot further away. That's a pretty nice one. I think I can actually attack them, yeah, this instance where uh, blood fire is very useful. Two blood fires because there's such a swarm of uh, enemies. The rats are weak, but they usually big swarm of them. Oh, whoa. Yeah, see, when they die, you can't recall the orbs immediately. You actually have to wait. Let's do this. Yeah, see, the archers are really effective against them because those uh, rats do a lot of damage up close, so you gotta use the archer to get them at range. It was those scorpions. They kind of look like rats. <laughs> Man, I just gotta press all these points here. Pressure points. If you're not careful, you can press two and then just have a swarm of enemies come after you like I just did. That can sometimes be fun, especially if you're doing like some sort of a speed run of the game. And you wanna do it the hard way. Oh wow, I recall actually and do this. Oh, that was a good spot. Uh, I think they'll, yeah, they aggro to the tank. At least those the rats do. 
Oh yeah, the bats. Okay, so Bloodfire can't attack bats. That's interesting. And once you kill enough, the uh, spawners break. Oh, whoa. There's a bunch of them. Let's recall them before they die. Yes, they will fight with them. Yeah, so it's definitely, uh, the gameplay is very interesting. Um, like I said, I've never quite played a game like this, and it's very uh, unique and fun, get enjoyable game to play. I think the graphics are, are nice, and so is the uh, music. I especially like the music. I think the music in this game is really phenomenal. It's just really good, uh, sort of 16-bit style music. Oh, did not use the scroll properly there. Yeah, I'm not sure why the scroll didn't work just now. Hmm. That's interesting. Oh, that's oh, that's weird. <laughs> Blue one appears to be on my side. I have uh, that was weird. I've never seen that before. Oh crap! Yeah, see that tends to happen. The level tends to. Uh, oftentimes the level just opens up whenever you clear waves of enemies and there's just a bunch more after that. You just get swarmed. Okay, I'm gonna do this. I think Bloodfire is the one who's most effective against the, uh, the Reaper there. So we're gonna do this. There we go. Oh, uh-oh, get him. <laughs> Alright, yeah, so that's, um, Soulcaster. It's a very enjoyable, uh, little indie game. Uh, like I said, you can get it on Steam, uh, for $5. And if the game looks interesting to you, I definitely recommend it. Um, in fact, there's actually, um, a remake, uh, being developed right now. If you go to, on to the Ian Stalker has a Patreon uh, page where he's developing a sort of like remake with much higher fidelity and Ethan Lee's behind it who does a lot of awesome when exports so that's that's cool. Um, and if you become a Patreon you can actually get sort of uh, access to sort of uh, I would assume he explains it in here. He gets uh, access to screenshots and concept art and stuff like that. You basically get to be a part of the development and get feedback and stuff. And, you, and if you pledge $10 or more, uh, you get access to a live stream. So if you're interested in uh, Soulcasters, and this would be, uh, I definitely recommend picking the game up on Steam. This is his website here, MagicalTimeBeam.com. Uh, you go to the Steam store here, this is where you can find the game. Only five dollars. It's on Linux, Mac, and Windows. Uh, the game's, you know, not demanding on, you know, uh, hardware at all. So it runs on pretty much everything. It's definitely a, an interesting little indie game, and I highly recommend it uh, for people who are fans of Magical Time Beans work or just uh, sort of 16-bit style uh, games. And even on his website, he has a nice write-up about Soulcaster, uh, Soulcasters. This is a good sort of insight on uh, any development, so it's definitely worth an interesting read, in uh, my opinion. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. This has been uh, Ghost Squad 57 here, showing you guys Soulcaster. Thank you guys for watching. Keith, signing out.